Um, my name is Lars Sorensen, and during the day I work for the Laboratory of Computer Science Research at Rutgers University where I work on educational research projects and I also built a collaborative lab called The Cave that the undergraduate computer science students use to basically be an unofficial headquarters and do collaborative work for their CS projects. Um, at, in the evenings, I teach computer science here at the Heroes Academy, and when there's a little extra time and there's not much, I am working on my PhD in educational psychology at the Graduate School of Education, so I'm a busy person. Computer programming is the beginning of teaching somebody critical thinking, uh, reasoning, and problem solving. And these are the kinds of things necessary to get jobs in STEM fields. STEM is science and technology and engineering and mathematics. And in the next 10 to 20 years, there's going to be many, many jobs in those fields, and we're going to need people to fill them. Um, one would think this would cause the education system in the United States to stop at its tracks and pivot, but it's a leviathan. It does not move easily. So in your best case scenario, students in high school will get a keyboarding class. Um, perhaps their senior year in high school they'll get an AP Java course and then they're sent to college. And when they get to college they're unprepared for what they need to do to work within a computer science program. They need to learn new operating systems. They need to learn new programming languages. They need to acclimate to the college lifestyle, 15 credits, they have to make their own schedules, boom, boom, boom. It creates a cognitive overload that makes it a bad situation. And at this point, the kids bail. They go become lawyers or bankers or, you know, the guy that gives you french fries at Arby's. Nothing wrong with any of those things, but there's not going to be jobs for those fields 10 years from now. So what we want to do is create a situation where people are exposed to computer programming and computer science ideas earlier than their senior year in high school. And that's part and parcel of what we're trying to do here at Heroes. The reason we want to get kids into Heroes and start giving them introduction to Python now is because if in 6th, 7th, 8th grade they're exposed to a programming language and start seeing some of these ideas that they're going to see for solving problems and for reasoning, well then they have all of those years in high school to mull over that. They'll have seen it. They'll see other things on the World Wide Web. Then when they hit their first year of college, they won't have that cognitive overload because they'll have already seen those ideas and they'll be able to move smoothly through any field they want, science, engineering, computer science if they choose to go that way. Then all of the jobs that will be available for STEM fields will be available to these students. And it's not that you're just sitting behind a desk for eight hours a day. There's computer science and programming jobs in CSI and police work. There is game creation, making video games. That's all computer work. There's uh, computer opportunities in the medical field. In all different fields. There's computers everywhere, so don't think you'll have to sit in a corner cubicle with, you know, your little red stapler and waste away all day in the corner, because that's not what it's about. It's about becoming a problem solver. And if you can become a problem solver, then you'll always be employed and you basically have a happy life. That's what we do here. We give happy lives. concentrate on three things that sometimes get missed in regular computer science instruction. The first thing that we're really serious about because of what I spoke about previously is exposure. We want our students to see these things, programming languages, the problems we solve, the way that we solve them, loops, data, variables. Just seeing this for the first time is important in a fun atmosphere and a friendly atmosphere so that there's no fear of technology. There's no, oh, I'll never understand that. We, we expose them to it. And the second facet is that we demystify everything. A lot of times when you take a computer science course, you'll get 
just frozen by the jargon because you don't understand what people are talking about. Iterate over the loop, data, datum. You're like, I don't understand that. We don't go that route. We talk about numbers and words when we talk about data. We don't talk about iterating over loops. We talk about repeatable actions that can be done over and over again. So we try to demystify things and pull the curtain back. Remember the Wizard of Oz? We don't see the big mighty Oz. We pull the curtain back and we see the old guy throwing the levers. And the kids realize quickly that it's not that complicated. It really isn't. So we, we demystify things for them. And the last thing and the most important thing I think is that we show the utility of what they're learning. Sometimes that gets lost. You could take a Java course and it's all about learning Java syntax and making the language do this and do this and do this. And at the end of the day, you forget why you're learning a computer language in the first place. You're learning it to solve problems. You're learning it to do things. So in the middle of our course, we stop, we put on the brakes, and we say, okay, what if we wanted to write programs for cryptography? So we take a whole class and we talk about cryptography and secret codes and secret messages and steganography and things along those lines. Then we learn about some more Python. Then we stop dead in our tracks again and we learn about games and creating two-dimensional video games and game loops and, and pie game module and, and things along those lines. So then we'll go along and learn some more and then we stop dead in our tracks and we bring Mongo the now robot here. And the kids learn that they can use Python programming to control robots and to do robot programming and artificial intelligence. So those three facets really do make learning a language here different. The first is the exposure part, we make sure that the exposure is a soft, friendly way to see these concepts for the first time. Then we demystify them, we make sure everybody knows what they are, don't be scared. Yes, you're going to learn the buzzword, but you don't have to be frightened by the buzzword. And lastly, the utility. We're learning the programming language to actually do something with it. We're not learning Python for the sake of knowing Python. So those are pretty much the three big differences when you come learn programming, when you come and learn programming here at Heroes. When you learn computer programming here at the Heroes Academy,